Привет, друзья! Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Singer Dad Reacts. My name is Josh, and I'm kind of doing a full circle with this reaction because my very first time hearing uh, Diana Ankurinova was when she performed Dernier Dance. Um, I think it was from a performance around three years ago. And so this performance is from a year ago at the Bard Club uh, Caper Kaylee's Nest, I believe is how it's pronounced, in Moscow. Uh, so she performed it again here in 2020. So I'm really curious to see what she does with it um, a couple years later, now that she's been growing as an artist. Um, I also wanted to do this because my original uh, reaction to this song was to a very short performance. So it was like a two minute performance. And I know a lot of you um, didn't like the fact that I chose that performance to react to. So uh, I wanted to give um, Deanna another shot at um, this song and see again um, what she brings to it later, later on. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to, to jump in and, and to react to this song. I did do a little bit of research. So one of the things I want to point out before I start in on the lyrics is that my videos have chapters in them. So what that means is when you bring up the YouTube video, right where you kind of click play and you can kind of see where the video is at in the playtime there's a uh, a line where it shows you where the video is at and there's in, in that line you should see different sections or chapters that i've set up within the video so you can easily scroll forward with your cursor to my reaction and skip the lyrics so i wanted to put this before i went into the lyrics so that you had the opportunity to skip them if it's not something you're interested in so as you can see here i mean it was written by adila sadrea uh, or known as uh, Indila. And from what I read about her, she chose this performance name for herself because of her love for India. She has kind of a mixed culture as far as her background, Cambodia, I believe, and India, um, and Egypt, I believe, as well. So, but during the time that this was written, I believe she was in Paris, and she was struggling with a lot of things as far as just feeling like she didn't have a lot of support from the people around her in that area and and she was dealing with a lot and and so this song kind of came from that and um it's a song about uh rising up and and kind of facing those challenges and um and but coming to terms with the struggles that you're having and and facing them head on right so really neat kind of her story and her journey and and uh, how it all came about so i'm going to start in here with the with the lyrics so the first verse here is uh, oh my sweet suffering why do you hound me incessantly i am just an, an unimportant person Without it, I'm a bit lost. I wander alone in the subway, a last dance, to forget my immense sorrow. I want to run away for everything to begin again. Oh, my sweet suffering. Uh, and then the chorus, I move mountains day and night. I dance with the wind, the rain, a little love, a bit of honey. And I dance, 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 dance. And in the noise, I run and I'm scared. Is it my turn? Here comes the pain. Throughout Paris, I abandon myself, and I fly, 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 fly. And there's a bridge, nothing but hope, on this path in your absence. Try as I might, without you, my life is just a beautiful display, meaningless. And then the chorus again. And then the second bridge. In this sweet suffering, I paid for all the offenses. Listen as my heart is immense. I am a child of the world. And then the chorus again. So one distinction that was pointed out when I was reading the, the little write-up about uh, Indila and about 
this song and how it came about was the choice of the words here, I am a child of the world. She could have easily said, I am a child of France or of Paris, but she chose, I am a child of the world. Um, and it, that could be partially due to the fact that she has a lot of different cultures represented in who she is and her, her heritage and everything else. And so she sees herself more as a child of the world with a lot of different um, cultures that are a part of who she is, right? Um, in this sweet suffering, that, that's really a profound statement there, right? And my take on that is that she understands a lot at this point in her life as far as the fact that sometimes when we have suffering, it ends up being a sweet thing. Sounds crazy, but we learn to gain wisdom. We learn uh, patience. We learn how we are meant to take that suffering and be able to help someone else because of what we went through and the fact that we can understand when others have pain or suffering um, in a way that others can't. So that's what I kind of read into that as far as sweet suffering. Uh, so it has to do partially with a perspective that tells me that she had a lot of wisdom at this point in her life and she was handling the things that were happening to her in, in, a, in a positive and constructive way, which, which is awesome. Um, let's see if there's anything else that stood out here. I've moved mountains day and night. So she feels at this time in her life, and this is part of what I read, that she's really accomplishing a lot of things. Um, but yet she still feels like there's just a lot of pain and unneeded suffering going on, considering all of the, what she's putting into her life at that point. So um, a last dance to forget my immense sorrow. So I think the dance is part of uh, an escape, an escape from the sorrow, an escape from the pain, a way to kind of get through the hardships that she's encountering and to get past them and to, and to kind of deal with them, right? So that's, that's my take on it. So I'll go ahead and dive in here with the reaction. Um, but again, for those of you that are new to my channel or if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it if you could please uh, subscribe, click on the little notifications bell right here. Um, it really does help with the channel and I really appreciate that. The last time I looked on my YouTube analytics, it said that only around 10% of those that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you do like my reactions and you come back for more and you enjoy those, if you could please show your support and, and subscribe. There's no obligation when you do that. Um, it's just a way to support the channel, so thank you.
you could already tell one of the things I did do was go back and watch my original reaction and her original performance, of course, that I from uh, from that reaction, so that I would have some kind of way to compare and contrast what I'm hearing on this reaction. You can already I can already hear the maturity in her voice and the the growth that she has in her control, in her placement, in her her runs, and the, the strength behind her runs. For the original performance that I watched when she was 14, she was amazing, no question. Um, that was just renewed to me when I went back and watched it again. But she's even better here. And she just, she has so much color to her voice. I've talked about this before, but it's just so unique as far as an artist where she's doing different things with the sound throughout each phrase. So sometimes she might have the sound kind of more forward and kind of a brighter, and then she might like, you know, drop the larynx and it's more of kind of that darker, richer sound that's unique to Diana. Um, and then she might jump into her head voice with kind of that yodel type feel um, with the, the control and her ability to jump from one to the other. Um, so yeah, she's, she's phenomenal. I'm excited to hear the rest here. Let's see. Je veux vous prie, couture, her dynamics too in and out She's she's amazing. She just has so much control and she really just is so smooth with her transitions when she does these little kind of, I guess I'll call them mini runs, where she's just like, you know, does you know three or four notes where she's kind of doing, you know, a little run on some of these phrases. But it's so, they're so precise. Um, and I love her playfulness and her, her performance aspect of what she does. And if any, any of you that watch my channel know that I love to see a good performance where the artist is putting themselves into the song and feeling the lyrics and bringing something powerful through the message and internalizing it to themselves and applying it and thinking about okay how does this apply to me at this point in my life and and how can i communicate that through the performance so i love that yeah because i can tell that she's really trying to do that with her performance here She how she pulses with the song. Notice how she sung the chorus now. This is the second time she's singing it. And she's adding more energy this time to the chorus that she's singing. And she's kind of making this almost kind of pleading gesture. Like, I'm reaching out. I want for this, the dancing. And I want to be able to deal with the stuff that I'm going through. And, and um, 
kind of the message of that chorus, right? So I'm going to go back and we'll watch that one more time. But you can you can really see it. I move heaven and earth day and night. Translation's a little different from the one I found, but it's the same kind of. My whole heart, heart I work without you. My life is just decor that shines empty of meaning, right? So she's. See her reaching out there. She closes her eyes like she's kind of escaping. That little jump. See how she's adding that. And this is again a prime example of her taking that vol vol and she's if you go back to where she started the first vol to the, the final vol, the timbre and the darkness kind of she goes to a, a darker tone for the final vol, right? So she's kind of again in that what what is involved mechanically with that um, part of it is is usually dropping the larynx to get that darker kind of sound, um, and maybe she kind of you know. Uh, brings the sound a little bit more back and less forward so you can kind of see with her face actually her mask they call it is a little more relaxed and not because with the brighter sound you're going to see that the singer is going to kind of do this what i call the singer smile i've talked about it before right so they're going to kind of add this kind of twang or forward placement or um you know more up when you get in classical training they talk about having the sound come through and out your forehead, right? So that's kind of that forward placement of the sound, where, whereas with the darker tone, she's kind of relaxing that, bringing the larynx back a little bit to get that darker sound on the end of that phrase. So let's listen to that, the vol. But it's still good quality. It's good pitch, good tone quality for that final. She's into it. She's adding that cry in there. Oh, cool. That's cool they're showing the setting there that's like a super intimate setting wow i want to hear this last the last chorus here real quick again she did something different on this one a little bit of that yodel kind of sound See, there's a little bit more here. She's bowing. Yeah, so you can definitely see, as I, I mentioned before, that she's 
matured vocally and as a performer. Um, and again, this is just like a, an informal setting. Um, and I've performed in these types of settings before. I think I, I performed in a dinner theater type environment a couple of times when I was in college. And it's just a different experience, right? Um, but she still just sounded super professional in the way that she approached it. And she was in the song and um, she's got great maturity. I mean, I have to remind myself, I think she's in this one, she's like 16, I think, in this performance. So she's like some of the other prodigies that I've reacted to where she's just well beyond her years in her approach to performing and to really owning the song and, and bringing the best possible rendition of the song and the message behind it and telling the story and all that. Yeah, and she has kind of those few things that are just unique to her voice, that, that kind of dark uh, sound that she brings uh, that's really full and, and um, you know, rich. And she also has kind of this, the yodeling factor, right? Because that from her early beginnings, I know from my research that that was one of the things she learned at a very early age was the yodeling piece. And, and so she kind of leverages that to some degree when she does some of her jumps into her head voice and falsetto and things like that. Um, but they're always, her jumps are always like really solid because of how well she's trained that part of her voice to jump back and forth between her, like her chest and her head and things like that. Um, yeah, so this, this was great. I'm glad I did this to kind of see where she's at in her progression. And before I jump to the, the new stuff, I know a lot of you are dying for me to move on to the Can't Help Falling in Love. And I thought about doing that one for this reaction, but I think Take On Me was from 2020, but I wanted to do something else from 2020 as well before I move to the new stuff. So unless there's another performance from 2020 that all of you are just like dying for me to react to, I'll probably jump to her can't help falling in love because I love that song. And, and, uh, it looks like, you know, a really solid performance and I really want to see her take on that, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And if there are others that you want me to, uh, react to. But again, uh, and I've talked about this before with Diana. Um, I kind of look at Dimash this way as well because and he's a little older, obviously. But I look at them like I would my children in a way that I'm just super proud of, of who they've become and their growth and progression. And, and in Diana's case, what she overcame. I mean, she had a really just very rough childhood. And music was her escape basically so just a, a just a great story as far as what she overcame the people that took her in and and really loved her and showed her a better way and and gave her the opportunity to learn and to grow as as a, a singer and a musician and as a performer and the way that she just dove in and and just went for it and all of her natural abilities and all that so i'm excited to see her progression and continue to see her grow as an artist and and um i look forward to doing more reactions of diana as i do with all of my reactions i'm going to close by saying that each of you needs to know that you are special you are loved and you can accomplish your dreams and Deanna is a prime example of that, right? She was in a very bad place at a very early age, and she believed, and she had others around her that believed in her, and look at what she's accomplishing. So we need to be the type of people that believe and rise up, but also the people that show kindness and support and encouragement to those around us, because we don't know what they may be facing or what challenges they may have. Um, and how much they may need us to be that light for them and to 
uh, support them and help them to to have hope and and to rise up and overcome things right so um, i hope we can all do that for each other and come together as part of this wonderful community that i'm trying to form here with my channel and um, music does light the world so i hope that it does for you and i hope this channel in some small way can can provide some of that light so again thank you all for your support and take care